This week at Edison Motors, we at, oh, why do we keep putting barrels right behind the doors? You're gonna get the freaking forklift. Like we got, that door doesn't open. Just move them like four inches to the right. All right, so it's like day five of driving around here and we had the truck in the shop. We did a little, few little updates on it. Mainly it's what we're gonna be checking today. It's gonna be screens. I wanna see speedometer, wheel speed. We wanna see regen. We wanna see some confirmation of some things. And it's just a day of let's see what we can break. Yeah. The goal here is to break the truck and find a fault code. Yep. So far that's proven difficult because it's not breaking as much as Topsy was, which is good, but also we want to know. We want to know. Oh, now. We want to know here. now before we yeah. send it to the customer because yeah. we only have a few days left and um, I think we're feeling pretty comfortable. If today goes well, the regen, the speed, everything's there. The CMVSS requirements are there. We'll send it off to the customer. So, fingers crossed. Today, we have some screens not working entirely as intended. This is just test for now. We're trying to report device temperatures and fault levels. The only one that's working for on this end is the BMS. The temperatures are okay, fault levels are flickering. It's just the way we're passing on data right now. Um, lots of debugging. I have it all in, on this system. It's all the controllers up there. We're gonna get it working. This screen's gonna be the primary screen. We are testing as we're hooking up ABS and all the other systems. We're gonna be testing vehicle speed. That's when we can start doing cruise control, regen, all that fun stuff. Basic displays for air pressure. Battery is not passing on. We're gonna be showing different gear selections that goes into CMVSS stuff where we have to display certain information, make sure it's always there. Just testing, getting a feeling for it. Not what the customer interface is going to be. That is going to be worked on by us and our designer as we flush things out. This is just for today, a little bit of testing. First glitch of the day, axles did not shift. Um, as we've been adding devices, we've been playing with our CAN bus. CAN buses require termination on either end, just the proper resistance. We were missing that, plugged in a resistor, all it takes, we're ready to go. Oh, and I also want to say that we do have seat belts in this. They are just lap belts, but for testing, we do have seat belts. A lot of time though, you just, by the time you tuck them in, they're not seeing. So if you are watching this video about the comments, we do have seat belts on. They're just lap belts because that's all we're required to have for this. All right, ready? Yep. Clear. <laughs> How are we doing for power on this one? As in voltage? Yeah. Um, high, this is the highest we've ever been. We're at 630. Oh, okay. So lots of charge. I uh, meant for torque. Oh, same torque mapping as yesterday. Oh. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Last drive? Yep. Oh, <laughs> I see the vehicle speed. Oh, All it, right. it, it, it showed 17 there for a second. Suspiciously quiet. <laughs> Especially now that the fans and pump aren't so loud. I still hear the squeak. Yeah, it, there's a bit of torsion there. Something's twisting. Something's not happy. The fuck is that? We've taken the panels off. We've done, like, there should be nothing that's squeaking. It still feels like it's that same spot, like, it's right the under same the floor. Spot. Yeah. I should have honestly just told Damon to do a few passes in the log yard. It's just so rough in here. Yeah. Yes, it is our shake test. It is a shake. I love that we had to go through a shake test yeah. before doing on the track. Rattle everything loose before <laughs> doing the high speed testing. If you let off the throttle a bit, doesn't it just should coast like it did before? Yep. Okay, cool. Good. Oh my God. <laughs> Why don't we just take this door panel right off? Like if it's in the door panel. Is it in the door? I it don't know. Be. We gotta get that squeak fix before we deliver. Yeah. But I'm glad the panel and everything behind us isn't shaking like it was. That's good. Yeah. Everything else is it's just whatever squeak is happening here. Looks way smoother today. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
All right, I'm gonna have a look and see if we can stop and figure this thing out. Okay. Remember that cab squeak that we seen in the previous video? We thought we had fixed it. We thought it was a little contact with the fender and an occasional bump. Wasn't that, but we did finally find it. We came out, we drove it again. It was back. We took the side panels off. We checked it out again. It was a little bracket that we had to move and then retighten into a different position. We've driven it again. It's fixed it. Fingers crossed it doesn't come back. It's a little bit of a design change we're gonna have to make in the future, change up the bracketry a little bit. Um, these are the things you're learning while you're testing. I'm Yael, I'm our electrical design lead here at Edison, and I'm here to talk about harnessing. So on Topsy, we ran a bunch of our own wires and that led to a bunch of bugs, like wires falling out or getting damaged. And then on our undisclosed truck, we built some test harnesses just to get it up and running. And even there, we noticed a bunch of bugs. And we decided we're going 100% of our harnesses made by a professional manufacturer. And let me show you the software solution we found to make that work well. I'm here to talk about Arcadia. It's our new cloud-based harnessing and electrical design software, and it's really expedited our design process. We used to do our electrical schematics in one software, and then we'd translate that into our harnessing software, and then we'd send it to our manufacturers who would again turn that into another software and then manufacture it. So it was really slow and we got in touch with them and we found out what software they were using and we actually switched to Arcadia. Now all of our engineers can work on the same project at the same time to get harnesses out the door really fast. And at the same time, our manufacturers can see what our bomb is and order those parts well in advance, which shortens lead times and expedites our manufacturing process. I'm gonna show a little demo here. First, I just have to click show two locations on my harness and it's going to show where I need to connect. And then I just need to go like that. And it's already going to have all of our wire info. So just like that, we can connect all of our harnesses together and we don't have to re transfer our data from one software to another wire by wire. I just pulled up this electrical schematic. This is our TCU to axles electrical schematic, and it has all of the information, which is super valuable because I just have to add it here. And then we just auto generate. And this schematic is automatically linked to our harness. So if I make a change here, it gets propagated through to our harness. And with that, we can make things like this, which is an example of our final output for our TCUs. We ordered this harness and now it's on the truck. What was that? It's just my phone, sorry. Ah. Uh, loud noises there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Driving around, quiet. That's a lot better. Full send. <laughs> Uh, oh. She's soft in the cab, eh? Yeah. It feels better than Topsy, because that's yeah. the way Topsy was. You push a button and then just hope you're in gear. Like this one gives you a little bit of like that little little feedback. Yeah. Like it doesn't even move it. Like if you're in neutral with your foot off no. the brake, it doesn't even move the truck. It just yeah. shimmies the truck a little bit. Yeah. It gives you a little shake and you're like, oh, you're in. It feels like the clutch, like a transmission yeah. going in. It scared the shit out of us the first time we did it, right? <laughs> but because you don't expect it all to spin and lock in. I mean, it makes sense as soon as you do it, but yeah. It is nice that they have a neutral feature for towing. Yeah. Are we going to try a little regen? We can. We should probably do it from a zero speed. I don't, as we were driving around, I was looking at it a little bit and thinking about it. Okay, I'll cut on the brakes here. I would like to do it differently than I've got it right now, but we can try it. What I would like to test is some of the things of like, hey, if I'm driving here, yeah, let's see if we get voltage spikes or anything. Like I'm sure. doing 31, yeah. coming off the throttle. Anything weird happened? I happen? didn't really do anything. We didn't have any fault codes, no error codes, no. nothing like that. Okay, I'm gonna try that again. Sure. From 40. No air no, codes, like nothing. The voltage, you see the voltage go down as we're drawing and then back up as we start to regen. But yeah. it's not... But we know it's working and we're not getting fault codes. Yeah. So, so that's that's a big win and we can work on that yeah. programming while it's at the customer. 
Some of the tests we're gonna be doing right now is a brake burnishing test where I'm gonna be driving at 70 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna be making a hard brake application to bring it down to about 30 kilometers an hour. And then I'm gonna bring that speed back up and I'm just gonna repeat that every kilometer and a half or so. I'm also gonna be doing a braking test and a high speed test on it where I'm gonna be getting this truck up to speed on the straight stretch. I'm gonna do that as a couple of test runs. I'm gonna get it up to speed on the straight stretch. I'm gonna slam on the brakes, lock up those tires, see what happens with ABS and everything so we can monitor that system. So a lot of what we're gonna be doing today is brake testing now that we're on the track. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. Right there is ninety-seven. Alright, here we go. Okay. Hopefully the sack's not in the way of the track. <laughs> Don't come, I'm in the way. <laughs> She's a little rough. No, but those seats make such a difference. Yeah. All right. That was a gentle run. Yeah, that's all okay. Everything looked good. Temperatures, yeah. we got up to 70 there. Yeah, that's normal. That makes sense. I mean, they're, they're gonna be working. I couldn't answer your call because I was monitoring speed on my phone. Let me start by just saying that that sucked. Oh? It is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why? It's so quiet. It's, it's so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Why you? Holy shit. Bro. <laughs> Sorry. That's wicked. <laughs> it's just so quiet, eh? Whoa. You hear the gravel kicking up. That's it, eh? Wild. <laughs> All looking good. Yep. I guess I don't need the speed yet. Big thing is the batteries don't heat up, so that's what's nice. Nice. These seats are so comfortable. They are. Like, I know the truck's shaking because it is, but if I'm just like... I mean, we're also cruising down yeah. a dirt road, yeah. Yeah, then I don't really feel much. Okay, here we go. Okay, you ready? Yep. There's a nice gradual one, there's 96. How'd that look? Anything weird, anything abnormal? No, no, it's all fine. How do the brakes and everything feel? Good. Normal truck? Normal truck. Nice. It did everything it was supposed to do. Are you, do you find you're accelerating fast enough in that top range? No, no, I feel like I could have a little, it feels like it falls a little light. How is there a power doing? I uh, like battery? No, throttle, like what kind of oh. percentage power? Can we increase our power? Yes, <laughs> that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, let's increase the power a little bit. I don't want to have to, although it accelerated way more than a normal track did. Yeah. I feel like we could have more. Okay. We'll try that as a power steering again here. Sure. Okay. Little honk to let them know I'm doing a live run. And let me know what you think of the throttle. If you're like, that didn't feel like it changed anything, then I can increase. Oh, that changed it. Yeah. Yeah. That changed it. So it is updated? Yeah. Okay. That's, again, do that live. I can do that. Yeah, no, I got more on the top end now. Okay. Do you want more? Yeah. Can we do more? I I don't know what the limit is. Like, on, you know, what I have. What happens if you over limit it? Well, I don't know. I th th the TCUs will just stop at a certain point. Oh, okay. Honestly, that feels pretty good because, like, now we can. Oh yeah, yeah. We rocking on it. Okay, cool. All right, this is a big one. So if you're watching yep, everything. I'm ready. Recording. Stupid sharp corner right at the end. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah. Oh, do you feel her pick out yeah. of that corner and go? Yeah. 
96, 96, right there at 96, 97, 96, 96, 3, 2, 1. Oh, nice. How'd she look? Any faults? No. <laughs> no. No faults? She's wicked. Awesome. So that was awesome. We took a whole measurement there and it's 195 feet from where those cones are to where I tried to brake. Basically, as soon as the steer axle passed those cones, I stepped on the brakes. We are 195 feet, 196 feet, give or take, to this line. We need to stop within 720 feet. And if you look down here at the end of the pavement, the end of the pavement is 730 feet away. So as long as we get stopped on this pavement before it ends up and it hits the dirt section, that means that we pass. And as you can see, we're close. Now we do have to try this again. Once we get this off to the customer, it's gonna get its body, it's gonna get its rig up, it's gonna add weight, and we're gonna have to do the brake testing again. But honestly, I think if anything, weight is gonna help because looked at the, some of the footage there, the back end was chuttering, it was lifting a bit, a little bit more weight, it's gonna get more planted. We still had plenty of brake and power. I'm happy with how this performed, and I'm happy that brake lag, I watched the video, I stepped on the brakes, and. It, as soon as I did it, those brakes locked up and grabbed. Very little brake lag, very good stopping distance. I think this is a win. This is a great day of testing. We did all the laps. I did some brake burnishing. We did the regen braking test. I'm happy. I don't think there's any more tests that we can, there is more tests we can do, but I'm comfortable. We've done all of the tests. Now it's just a matter of doing them again and again and again, but you can tell I'm excited. I'm just, I'm really happy with how this truck is working and going. So that was awesome being able to take that truck over the last few weeks, driving around and around and around the test track, doing some braking, doing some little bit of more aggressive off-road bumpy surfaces. We didn't find as many fault codes as we would have liked. Yeah. Which sounds great, but it's also bad because I know they're there as an experimental vehicle. But as you can see behind me, that truck is no longer in the shop. So stay tuned next week when we go to deliver that to the rig up place. And stay tuned and make sure if you're interested in investing, you know, it's open on our website. So if you're curious, you want to support us, you know, all these milestones are reached. So thanks so much for your support, guys.